So to thread this machine for string stitch, we make sure it's set on A and K, so it's in a straight. And then hook it. So I'm using the first bobbin spool holder. It doesn't really matter which one. Under the clip here. <coughs> this is for winding bobbins. You don't need a bobbin when you chain stitch. Hook it under there. Oops. Wrong way. So on this machine, it's a bit funny. So you put it like that, and through this hook here. So the first hook in front, and then if you haven't, if this hasn't broken on, you can put it through there. It actually makes no difference, but it, the little flippy thing that comes down is there, so you can use it if you want. So I have tended to put the thread through the front um, washer on it, on the tension disc. Now make sure your tension is set at a reasonable tension. You'll find that make a difference. And then you hook it through this hook. Then you come up to the top and hook it through the thread feed lifter. It's feeling impressively stiff now. So that, okay, let's pull that tight. And through there, and I've used a lovely shade of orange, so you can see it well. So it must then go through that. Now, in this, it says to leave the door open. Um, I find it kind of works either way, but I have typically left it open just because the instructions say so. Through the hook there, through the top of the needle, thread holder, and then from the front to the back of the needle. And through the needle. Now this is a rayon thread, so it's not particularly nice to thread a needle with. And then I have used the straight stitch on here. So, first part. Here is the straight stitch plate for this 411G. So this it must be 503599, I'm guessing. And that just goes in as normal. You slide it over the feed dogs through those little clips and put it down. Okay. The <coughs> chain stitch bobbin case, the difference between this and the standard bobbin case is this little hooking mechanism here. So you can actually, if you were creative enough, you could actually make that hooking mechanism and put it on. So this says it's 50360 and then it's off the edge. But basically that's that. So you don't need a bobbin with chain stitching. And what we'll do is we will put that in here, push that back, and all being well, and I put close it, drop, drop that down. And what I tend to find is you need to play with your uh, stitch length a bit to get the best results. Now I haven't got this machine plugged in at the moment, but because it's so simple I can wheel it by hand. So if I wheel it by hand, it should be stitching properly now. Let's see what happens. So if you chain stitch like that, and I'm just going to make sure that it's in view. I can't remember if I left this in view. What we're going to do is go down there. So I shall redo that part of the video. Since that was out of view. So, coming back. And then the important part, the chain stitching, is you must. Using this type of spool of thread, you should make sure you have it in a horizontal thread holder or a vertical spool thread stand, because that solves your bother of them wrapping the thread wrapping around the uh, spool holder. Okay, there we go. So let's do this again. So <clears throat> here is the correct chain stitch, so it's a small there. 
must be 503599. And when this goes in, it just goes over, and the hook it slides through those feed dogs until it's in the right place. And then it has to clip in flat, make sure it goes in flat. It doesn't always, yeah, that little clip thing has to move. And this part, you can tell it's different. It just sits in the same way, but it's got that little hooking mechanism there, which is important. If you don't have that, I don't think it'll make your chain. So for instance, let's see if I forgot. So I have purchased an extra one because I found the tension on that wasn't very good, this tension spring. So was, these were pretty cheap to get a brand new one and it works very well. But you can see that they're essentially the same. Except for that little clippy thing. So you could easily kind of make one of those, I think, if you're good at precision or even 3D print them now, but that's fundamentally the difference between those two bits. So uh, putting in the chain stitch one. There we go. Close that up. Make sure it's good and flat. That's really important. It doesn't always sit flat. Then, all being well, so when I set that on chain stitch, it's just, must be about 15, it gives that perfect chain there. And you can adjust how you want that to look. You can make it longer, shorter, anything you want. So we'll just, oops, grumbling a bit. The tension seems to go extreme, so we'll lower it. Okay, so we'll just make sure that's not interfering. There we go. And then it just starts stitching as normal. So if you elongate the stitch, it will still chain stitch. I wouldn't go much less than 15. You can do, but you end up with weird results if you do that. So there's a really long stitch all the way to the bottom, so that's a six. And as I said, I've not got the power on, so I'm just turning this by hand. So if I reduce that up to, say, 20, it's not going to be very good much. It's not going to be very interesting, really. You're probably stitching through the edge of the thread by then. I will show you how that looks in a minute. Okay. So the important bit when you pull this out is if you've got a pull the thread out of the needle to leave you and you clip it there and then you pull it through and it won't now stitch. So as long as your tension's right, this is about 15 and that works very well. Then I've increased it and increased it all the way up to six. So you can get really long chains if you want. So those are pretty long chains and then you can go right down to 20. But there's kind of doesn't really do much. The tension probably needs to be a bit higher. But 12 and below, or 15 and below is fine. If you go up above that, it's not really giving a very nice chain. So that's really all there is to threading the chain stitch. And I'm going to do it.